for more on last night's game, we welcome our next guest for our big talk of the day from PhillyInfluencer.com, Sean Brace. Good morning, Sean. Hold on Sean. a second, guys. I have a question yes. before we get into it. Yes. Who wore it better? Oh, oh, boy. Or Sean? We might have to do it. There we go. <laughs> we, is, is, is the poll, Sarah? Should we I get think one we going? might need to do a poll on this. As soon as I walked in, I saw it. I'm like, no. He's got you the know? better beard. He's Perfect. got the better ball head. Look at that. Yeah, He's got the better there's shirt. There's a lot of similarities going on <laughs> it's here. It's a little scary, actually. <laughs> this is tough. This is, well, you have to let us know on Twitter. Yeah, you, we'll, we'll find out you know, by the end of the show. We have a full oh, hour to go. All right, I'll so get a picture and all that. good, man. That's good. You know, what's funny, really quick, before we get into the game, is yesterday, Josh Ponyol came on our show, and he actually stopped by the Facebook Live video that we do before the show every day because he wanted to make sure he didn't wear the same shirt as anybody else. Yeah. Well, he took a lot of heat the one time he was he, on. He yeah. wore the same shirt. Apparently, Sean didn't clothes. get the memo. This, no. is, this is the one time, and it will never happen again because yes. I will look at the Facebook Live feed before the show. <laughs> Shame on you, Sean. Shame on you. That's all I can say. All right, so let's look back at last night. You have to throw like eight qualifiers in here sure. by saying the Steelers sat everybody and all that. But right. the defense at least looks aggressive. They appear to be what Jim Schwartz wants in terms of just in theory. Yeah. We'll see if they can do it against the big boys when they get – Andrew Luck next week, and then it gets real, you know, against Cleveland. But what do you, what's your takeaway from the defense? Yeah, last exactly time? that. First things first for me, Jim Schwartz. This is a huge year for that de for the defensive coordinator. If he has a good season, guys, you got to you got to believe that he's going to get a look at a head coaching spot mm -hmm. in the league. So this is a huge spot for Jim Schwartz. I believe in the defense. Nolan Carroll coming out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Obviously, last year he had a good season, mm -hmm. got hurt, but. I mean, just stepping up and, and reading that play with the pick six and the play before that in the in the first uh, series, the first drive by the Steelers, he made a nice play, knocking yeah. it away. So Nolan Carroll stepping up. Will he be that starter at that cornerback position? A lot of people are leaning that way right now. Uh, it was great to see Malcolm Jenkins back there. The two safeties, Rodney McLeod and Malcolm Jenkins together. So there was a lot of bright spots on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, I'm not going to get too crazy because, again, like you said, there's a lot of qualifiers. First the qualifier for me, Rob, is this. Mm -hmm. They're playing each other in the regular season, the third week. Yes. Uh, you know, what, it, so you can't game plan, yeah. you're not going to get anything interesting. Straight vanilla. Right. And, and I thought Sam Bradford was kind of taken back a little bit in the press conference by some of the, the questions in the beginning. He was just like, Whoa, he's up, guys. Yeah, 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 you guys yeah, are yeah. like already. Exactly. Sam's been here long enough to know how we panic. Yeah. Yeah. He should know better. You guys are in mid-season mid four already. Exactly, here, I was so. just going to say. But there, there are some issues to be taken away, even though it's preseason and all those qualifiers, blah, blah, blah. You've got to be a little bit concerned with the offense. How are they going to put up points? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think, I, I, I don't know. From everyone I speak to, it's 8-8, eight 7-9, and, eight, seven and nine, yeah. positive 9-7. and seven. So right. what are we really talking about here? What type of team? That's the team I'm looking at. So whether it's preseason or the third week of the season versus the Steelers at home, mm -hmm. I still think they're going to struggle on offense. Yep. Uh, who's the wide receiver? I mean, guys, they're, they're calling up the Tennessee Titans. And they get Green Beckham, you know, to, to hopefully step in here and, and 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 solidify that position. So it's just a struggle across the board on offense right now. Offensive line, I'm a little nervous about. Obviously, we all should be with Lane Johnson out for 10 games. Still waiting to see what happens there. But uh, yeah, I, I just. I think it's fool's gold. Well, I don't think it's to put it like that, but I just think we're all on the same page when we say that this offense is going to struggle regular season or preseason. Yeah, I don't. What's the identity? You know what I mean? Like, what are they exactly? Yeah. We know what it's a West Coast yeah. offense, but what, yeah. what exactly? You know, you don't have, you don't appear at least to have the playmakers on the outside. You, no. you know, it's a running game where you know Matthews is pretty good and effective if he stays on the field, but there's always the if he stays on the field part of that. Yep. It's just, and, you know, in Bradford, it's like, all right, can we just move on to Wentz? So there, it's, it's a weird circumstance surrounding this offense. Well, Bradford's numbers last night were 14 and 19 mm -hmm. for 115 or whatever 115, it was. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think, you know, we're going to see that in the regular season. Yeah, that's you know, the thing. Throughout the course of a couple games that, uh, that Peterson called in Kansas City, um, and there has been some good breakdowns at phillyamster.com about the game plan that he's rolled out there all last season, this is what he does. Dink and dunks, get the tight 6 ends involved. 6.1 yards per attempt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get the tight ends involved, swing it outside the backfield, get the running game yeah. going. He likes to stick to the run a little bit more than Andy. Well, right. I think I, I, I agree. With you. He'll be more true to it. I, I think, you know, and the, the other thing is, too, in Bradford's defense, if guys aren't getting open, you're not going to take shots sure. down the field, too. That's so true. what do you do? So I mean, what, how would you go in and, and, and analyze, you know, what they need to do on offense? You know, what's the biggest piece that they need fixed on offensive line? Well, not, I'm saying that, uh, you know, that's, that's my yeah, <laughs> offensive line, but what's the biggest thing they need to fix on offense at this point? 
I mean, look, if, if you can get the running game going, and that, that dictates around Ryan Matthews being healthy, right? I think we're on agreement there. Well, that's why he played pretty good. Yeah, Barner looked good yesterday. Looked good and, but yesterday. here's the deal. If Barner doesn't play, that means Ryan Matthews is playing. So that's a, that's a success all the way around. That's true. Um, and I like Barner. I think that uh, he showed you a little something last year when he got the opportunity, especially on special teams. But uh, with Sproles, I think that's going to be his position. Barner, if, if he's coming off in third down, I'm all right with that. But Ryan Matthews, if he's able to stay healthy, Healthy. He averaged, what, five-plus yards per carry mm-hmm. last year. I, I'm, I'm, again, that's the fool's gold because he is a guy that's been injury-plagued his whole yep. career. So I wasn't really all that on board when Chip brought him in last year. Now we're saying that this offense, you're asking me how, what's the key to success this year, and I'm saying it's around him. That's going to be a problem. Well, the offensive line uh, is the big thing. Yeah. You mentioned Lane Johnson. He played with the, se- uh, the second teamers last night. The move for Barber over the tackle, and then you plug in the kid, say Amalu, who's had his ups and downs, which you would expect from a rookie, especially a guy who missed the beginning of camp because of the the graduation thing from his school. What are your thoughts, Barrett? You look at what the offensive line did last night. How did you think they protected? Well, you know, they're going to have to run plays like that. That's a waggle play where, you know, you have play action, and you pull a guard around to create a little run action, you know, bring the safety, bring the linebackers up, and it gives you a little bit of a pass block that they didn't have. It brings an extra blocker to where the quarterback's going to be. You're going to have to do stuff like that. And this offensive line, you know, say what you want to say, Tom is going to be all right. Although he played slow, it looked like his feet were in concrete yesterday, that's only because he was doing too much thinking. At this point, he's thinking about the snap count. He's thinking about the play. What's his responsibility? What's the call to the offensive line? What's going on in front of him? Is there a linebacker coming over? Where's that safety at? There's a lot of things going yeah, through but- his head right now, and that's going to slow him down in his playing. But once he gets the, you know, the offense down and understands, you know, what it is to be an NFL player, I think he'll ch- settle down a little bit. He's got one more shot to figure all that out, though. I mean, why can't, how can you be so confident no, that he's going to? Not actually. They're going to have to game plan him in a way that, um, you know, will help him out. You know, they're going to have to run plays that are conducive to his skill set. Right. They're going to have to run those waggle plays, pull him around. They're going to have plays where he's going to double team. They're going to have to game plan around his inefficiencies at this point since he's so young. But they can do that because other guys, you know, I think can be very feasible in this offense. The problem is, Jason Peters, what happens if he goes down and now you're sliding Barber over to the, the right tackle right. position? It's yeah. just like... Peters goes down before Johnson gets back from an alleged suspension or yeah. whatever is happening. I mean, there. Matt Tobin is well, starting. That, then, it's, then it's chaos. <laughs> then, then it's Sam Bradford, yeah. you know, in, in panic mode. Can't blame him <laughs> if that's the case. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but, he's, I mean, he's going he's gonna to drop back and duck down, yeah. you know, if, if, if that happens, you know. So let's hope that, you know, Peters goes in. He prepared himself to play at the entire season. That's the biggest thing. He's the consummate pro. He's going to prepare himself like he's a star. And the good thing, he has a coach in Doug Peterson that understands, you know, there's going to be a lot of limitations on his practice time, a lot of limitations as far as, you know, what they're going to ask him to do throughout the week to prepare for game day on Sunday. All right, let me touch on a guy that made an appearance last night that we, we haven't seen a whole lot of appearances from him in his two-plus years here. That would be Marcus Smith. <laughs> Marcus Smith made a couple plays last night. It was now. exciting, and I saw him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to take it where you <laughs> You can get it considering he's giving you nothing virtually. But yeah. why wasn't everybody I mean, he, tweeting that? He did. He, you I know, saw tweets there. He, oh, okay. <laughs> he, he obviously reads this very well. He, he you know, fires jumps off, snap count, jumps yep. a snap count, and beats his guy. And this is exactly what you need this guy to do. Yeah, and, and it's going to come down for, uh, in my opinion, uh, how well he does on special teams. Because right now, Means is the guy that you're looking at saying, wait, I got to make a decision between you two. I don't even think there's really much of a question. <laughs> right. So who yeah. can do a Production. better job? on special teams. I don't know if you agree with me on that. And I, I'm sorry, I've seen enough of Marcus Smith. And I think, you know, if majority of Eagle fans would agree with me on that. So if you were to make the decision today, I'm leaning towards means. But then again, obviously, I'm not in the Cheaper. He's cheaper at this point. Sure. He has less years in the league. And you're right, special team. He has to show the ability to play special team. He didn't do it last year. He hasn't done it the past couple yeah. of years. What's limited to him even dressing out for he, most he, games. Here's where he's a unique case, though. He was drafted when Howie was still in place with Chip. But we, you know, we'll never get to the bottom of exactly who was in charge of yeah. that. But he was, Howie was here. So it's not like he's straight inherited by Doug Peterson. It was still under Howie's watch. Right. Would they be willing to admit that mistake? I agree with you. Like Means looks to be the better player. Yeah. But sometimes those decisions, and I, I don't agree I think, with it, are made for other reasons. Oh, yeah. I think they make that mistake. You're right. Roseman was there, but he, mm-hmm. he has a scapegoat if he needs it. You know? Just, this yeah. was, chip. It, was, it was Chip. It's always going to be Chip, right? <laughs> no, I, I hear you. I, but I, I do. That factors into these things sometimes. It Absolutely. Does. It should. First round pick. Well, yeah. We're yeah. Talking yeah. About, yeah. We are talking about Howie, though. Howie could pull off a trade from out of nowhere like he did with trading Dennis Kelly. I mean, I, 
forget the fact that Doriel Greenberg. I, I'm not even talking about, but he traded and got something for Dennis. Hey, Kelly. speaking <laughs> of that, let, let, let's touch on that for a minute. He wasn't supposed to play. Doug Peterson came out and at his last press conference during the week and said, said "Yeah, we're going to sit him. He's, he's not going to play. Understand? He just got here. Whatever." He, we see him warming up last night, and then all of a sudden, you know, we start getting. I, and I'm watching pregame with John Clark and Mike Quick, and Mike Quick says, "I think he's going to get some snaps." Yes, yeah, suddenly the list of guys who are scratching the game comes out. He's not on the list. Yeah, and he plays. A last surprise night. to everybody. He plays a little bit last yeah, night. Yeah, and this is a, a terribly underthrown ball by Chase Daniel. Right, 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 I mean, right. that either goes in the seats or you throw it high enough where a six-five guy can go up and get chance. it. Chance. Yeah. yeah, I want to see him have that chance. Look, we've seen him pull this down. With Tennessee last year, uh, yeah. he did in the Indianapolis game. A nice play. So uh, I want to see Chase Daniel get the ball elevated, give him an opportunity to go up and get it. And uh, he said exactly that in the post game press conference. Look, I'm six five. Just throw it up. I will go up there and come down with it. Um, he has the ability. Look, everything's been covered. He's six five, two forty. He's got the body. Uh, he's got the speed. Everything is there. He was the number one offensive recruit coming out of high school. Everything is there. Put it together. Yeah. You know, put well, it together. If he, if and he's from St. Louis, so come on, oh, guys. Come on. Of he's from St. Louis. Come but, on. I mean, it, he's to the point now where with the issues in college, now in your second pro team in your second year, it, it, like it, you hope if it's ever going to come on, you know, the light switch yeah. needs to come I, on now. I, want, I wonder about this, and I spent a lot of time thinking about it when I, from when I saw that he was going to play last night. This is a guy who, in Tennessee, they basically said he needs to put in the extra work. He's not getting it. Yeah. Two years in, he's not getting it. You need to understand the game plan by now. So maybe if you're the Eagles, you figure, you know what? Throw him out there. Trial by fire. Anything to get him going now because he clearly isn't the kind of guy to put in that extra class yeah, work. Well, yeah, I, I played with players like that that you had to simplify things, you know, in order to get him going. You simplify know. the wide receiver yeah, position. Right. I'm telling you, I mean, I've is seen there, is, like, It's like the cornerback position. If you're playing a third, you're playing man. Go up and get the ball. I played you know? with, play with a guy that, you know, in the huddle. We'd be in the huddle. All right, we got 322 <laughs> wide stick nod. You got the nod route. You have the nod route. Oh, my God. Oh, I, I do. I'm like, yeah, well, you have the nod route. We have to walk through every single play with this guy. So I've, I've seen it happen before. Amazing. He was a good enough talent mm -hmm. that you, he garnered, you know, you teaching him, you know. Yeah. So that happens all the time. I think this is one of those, this is one of those occasions where Doriel Green Beckham is a guy that's going to come in. He's going to make a, an impact on the season simply because he'll be a red zone threat. He's going to be more specialized. <laughs> And on from the twenty going in, as opposed from the twenty to the twenty. But also the company that he's in. I mean, yeah, there's every gotta, opportunity. There's not what's going on there. Right, yeah. Exactly. You're <laughs> not trying to break into a crazy lineup here. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, we're all watching last night, and and, and it's uh, Paul. I, I, Paul, Turner. Paul Turner. Paul Turner. Turner. Excuse me. Yeah. I mean, we're all watching him, going, "Oh my goodness, this right. guy might be a starter for us." Mm -hmm. He's probably going to end up getting cut. Yeah. He's the Rasheed Bailey he of this year. You well, know, he shouldn't. You know, he shouldn't. I thought Bailey showed you a little bit last year, and and. He just got cut this year. In fact, yeah, he just got cut. He just cut. got cut by the Jags, yeah. yeah. Uh, Turner, I, look, he's small. He's got a great story, but I think he'll catch the short end of the stick again. He'll yeah, it could be. I mean, the next two games are going to be big for him, like a lot of these guys yeah. that are on the bubble. All right, guys, let's circle back to our question of the day presented by Dunkin' Donuts. And all morning long, we've been asking you on Twitter and Facebook, what was your biggest takeaway from the Eagles win over the Steelers? Sean, I'll ask you yours in a second. But here's one from Steven who says, the defense, they put in the work, and it clearly shows. Loving the 4-3 defense. We talked a little bit about that Absolutely. earlier. Another one from Jeffrey who says that the first team offense still stinks. <laughs> Despite Peterson going vanilla, the offense continues to look bad. I can't disagree. Yeah, and uh, hard finally, argue. one from Amy who says, wear a helmet yeah. during the pregame. Okay, we got to get into this All right, one. let's talk about this. This is bizarre. Play. All right, yeah. so uh, yeah. Donnie Jones is out there warming up pregame. Caleb Sturgis is out there you know, kind of doing his thing, but he doesn't have a helmet on, right? All of a sudden, it's incoming, right? And Donnie Jones, I guess, blasts one and catches him, you know, clean. Concussed. And he's concussed. A kicker concussed before the game. Yeah. I, I mean, you think you've seen it all sometimes in sports? <laughs> nope. Yeah, I, I've never heard of this. I was concussed by a water bottle, John Brown, our, our state no, director. No, you were oh, well, you, stop. That, explain, that explains concussed. a lot, yeah. actually. I'm nah, concussed right now. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think maybe Dornboss was out there performing magic tricks. Uh, right. I, I, you know, there were some attention. people that, you know, Donnie Jones is tight with Cody Parkey, the fix is yeah, in. Yeah, there it oh, is. You started it. getting all there that. Now you see me. There it is. Now you don't. Know. Yeah. You know, and, 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 uh, Parkey, Peterson, Peterson was upset at, at, in the post-game press conference. He couldn't even believe it. Yeah. Like, I have to say Can this. you imagine, like, when you're, you're a coach <laughs> and you're, you're, you're going over everything you had to go over before the game, and then all of a sudden someone comes out, hey, coach, like, what's up? Um... <laughs> Caleb is uh, concussed. Caleb Sturgis, the kicker, yeah. he's concussed. What? 
You know what I mean? Can you, can you see that? If you're right. up here, you're like, the what freaking so, else can go wrong? Yeah. Oh, Lane exactly. Johnson suspension. Yep. Wentz breaks his ribs. Now my kicker's concussed before the game. I Somebody played with Gus Farratt. Yeah. Sam Bradford and pillows. Uh, yeah, yeah, I played with Gus Farratt. You know, so, headbutted the wall. Well, I wasn't with him in Washington, uh, but he was in Detroit with me. So the next year he came to Detroit. Oh, you guys just killed him. He right? never lived yes. that. Down. That's said, one of the all-timers. You know, we run it out of the field. Hold on, man. Don't, don't go over there, bro. Sturgis <laughs> is driving to the Novacare Complex right now with a helmet on. I'll, I'll oh guarantee God. that. I don't, I don't blame him. Actually. I'll guarantee that. <laughs> all right. So let's switch gears to the Olympics now because the closing ceremony, believe it or not, is, is Sunday. This thing's wow. flying. No. All right. And it's been an amazing couple weeks down there in Rio, that's for sure. All right. So we wanted to play a little game with you, Sean. An Love Olympic-themed it. version of our game, Date, Ditch, Marry, or Side John. All right, and the topic is events you wish you could compete in, okay? <laughs> they include pole vault, table tennis, fencing, and trampoline. Is trampoline really I yes. mean, a sport? Yes. It is Get now. Get out of here. If it wasn't there are already. a lot of sports that you didn't know were sports. All right, so let's start with... Uh, what are you dating here? Uh, dating? I've always wanted to play and be good at table tennis, so let me date table tennis. Okay, you're going to get your far as That's actually yeah. a yeah. skill that would translate into real life. You could start, like, you know, shaking up bars and stuff. Yeah, that would, you can make some money on that. Yeah, money, true, you know? very true. Okay, yeah. Yeah. all right, you're going to date that. What are you ditching? What's gone? Ditching trampolines. Oh, trampolines out? I get no trampoline, trampoline fun. Yeah, they, tra I wasn't a trampoline type of guy growing up. Okay. Uh, it got me sick to my stomach, I, I think. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> trampoline is ditched. All right, what are you marrying? Pole vaulting. Really? That's what it's all about, right? Right there. That's a million. I mean, usually a shot at that guy. Yes. That, that, that's unbelievable. Did you guys hear? And plus, there's so many things that could go wrong. You're not really <laughs> going there, are you? All right, I'm not going to I need mean, Kevlar <laughs> steel if I'm there doing that. There was a guy that. who got disqualified because of an Bobby yes. Hart knocking the uh, pole yes. off a couple of yes. days ago. That was a story. Oh, what? Come on, what? Yeah, 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 what? Yeah, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is true. That's yeah. all I'm going to say about that. It is true. We don't need to get into it no. anymore. What? No. There's a slow motion video online, Barrett. I'll show you during the commercial break. I don't know if I want to see that. No, you do. You know. Speaking of bar tricks, could you imagine saying, yeah, I'm a pole vaulter. Let's go out to my car. Let's get the, you know, the pole. Bring it right out. Now let's say you're running down Main Street. Put it in. Yes. Okay. And um, sure. that's, what, yeah. that's what she said. Guys. Right. I was not sure that where you were coming. going with that. Sarah, what, yes. which one are you dating, okay, here we ditching, ah, marrying, side Johnny? I don't know. I kind of I kind of think I want to marry pole vault, too, actually. It sounds like it would be a lot of fun. Okay. Dating? Uh, Dating trampoline because unlike the guy to my left, I think it's fun to like jump oh. up and do flips in the air and have a little sense of adventure. All right, you're ditching. Uh, I'll ditch fencing right. and side John table tennis. All right, Barrett. I, I, I'm actually going to ditch the, the trampoline because, first of all, you know. You have no fun. Well, it's not about fun. It's all about gravity. You know, I'm going through the trampoline, <laughs> that's so that's number one. That's a good point. Number two, I, I, we say date, ditch, and marry. I, I'm going to add another one. I'm divorcing pole vault because really? they don't have Kevlar that they can use to, as a pole to get me in air. That's Gra number two. <laughs> Very I true. would have to marry table tennis okay. and uh, and date fencing. But, you know, I can't. I got to. I got to. Ditch both trampoline and two ditches. Oh, you went two ditch. No, Double I thought I'm divorcing. Oh, you're divorcing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Rob, what do you say? I'm marrying pole vaulting. That looks like fun, man. I we will. should go try it somewhere. I wonder if we can do that. What am I going to date? I'm going to date trampoline. There you go. I'm going to ditch fencing and I'll side John table tennis. Cool. All right. All right. I don't, I don't, the, I don't know defense. if the lawyers would allow you to, to do pole vaulting. I, yeah. The, oh, right. We had our little, you know, during our Bob games, we did a little uh, fencing, and I, I, I'm i thrown off by I won. It. Yeah. I you saw you stab. Yeah. You took you Sarah. Women. Yeah. I, I, it, I took Rob it, out, though. So it, 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 I, I, my, my heart was taken out because I, I unfortunately, it, right. went in a bad place. It's going to be okay. okay. <laughs> Sean is going to stick around a little bit longer after the break. We're getting a new year, that's for sure. This morning, Sean Brace from PhillyInfluencer.com is here. We're talking Eagles. Sean, let's turn our sights down to the receivers and let's start with Josh Hoff because he's a guy I think who frustrates a lot of people huh. and we yes. talked about this earlier it seems like every time we talk about his receiving skills it's followed up by yeah but he can return kicks so he may survive but we see too many times balls that are right there like the one Bradford put on him last night dropped yep. and I think when he came in he was this big speed burner type of guy the, you know the Oregon mm -hmm. was in our mind with Chip and ultimately we start thinking about the swing passes and that's what he caught last night in that game which I thought uh, Nelson Aguilar provided a nice block for him and he wasn't able to turn the corner but if that's all you could bring to the table how good are you? Yeah, that's all know? they did in college. You know, former running back. He, you know, he kind of has the build of a running back still. He, sure. he, he could yeah, be a pretty good running back. He's, he's a bulky yeah. guy, yeah. yeah. But man, he just lacks. I mean, he double catches too many balls. You know, he lacks that that focus to just go in and just grab it. You, yeah. you can't play receiver and, and 
double catch and do things of that nature. Well, I guess I wonder how many more chances he's going to get. You know, what do you think happens at the end of preseason here? Does, does he make this the roster? Does he deserve to? Uh, it's a new coach, so yeah, I think he could be wild with the speed, and I think Josh Huff will make the roster. I do. Um, Look, you got to look at the guys that you, you, you should be able to count on this year. It's Jordan Matthews and it's Nelson Aguilar. It's Zach Ertz. I know we're talking about wide receivers, but those are the three that you need to step up. And, of course, now we could add Green Beckham to the list. And I don't think that that's unfair to sit here and say right now that we need production from Green Beckham. Uh, Jordan Matthews, we'll see what happens with the injury, but he, he had a good season last year, even though you know Chip Kelly and the offense struggled. Uh, and Nelson Aguilar showed us a little something yesterday going up on that third down pass. Uh, okay, fine. He, he caught one. One and then drop the next one. Yes, I mean, you're, you're still waiting for him. Rob, you were saying you're waiting for these guys to show flashes. Yeah. And you haven't seen it yet. And here we are. This is a, a first round pick. Yeah. yeah. Well, how much longer is he worth waiting uh, yeah. for? So what's the difference between that catch right there and last week's catch where he went up to get it? Same point last year. I mean, last week and didn't didn't do it. That yeah, like that's a really good about, play. Yeah. The, the problem is literally the next play, he, he drops, drops the ball. Right, it's not a great throw, but it's a ball that has to be caught by an NFL receiver. Consistency. Yeah. Yeah. That's what all the coaches talk about. It's just consistency. I want you to be consistent in practice and in the games. I want you to be consistent in the games. When the ball is in your hands, you need to come down with that play. Nelson Aguilar, he's going to look himself in the mirror and say he should have caught that ball. And if he would have caught that ball after he went up and made that nice play, we might have a little different tone about uh, yeah, Nelson Aguilar. Here, here's today. the thing. Unless and, and this very well could happen. You still have two preseason games. These guys could could go out there and crush it against the Colts and, and whatever. They could. But if it stays the way it is right now, they're going to have some hard decisions to make. I, I'm, Nelson Aguilar is safe. I don't hard mean, in yeah. a bad I don't way, mean Nelson yes. Aguilar. <laughs> hard in but, a bad yeah, way. Somebody Huff. like Huff, like if Turner continues to Paul play Turner. well, can you really – let this guy walk. If you throw him on a practice squad, somebody could claim him. Uh, you know, there, there, there's going to be some choices to be made. Ruben Randall, I thought he would flash a little bit last night. Didn't really. No. Paul Turner will be the guy that will get cut or get on practice squad, and they'll pick him up in New England, and, and he'll, he'll be the next well. round. Not, not Ruben Randall getting cut? Because <laughs> yeah. you said before he, he's sort of an overlap in a way with Green Beckham. They're a similar kind of a guy. Very, very similar. I think he may be cut also. Oh. Yeah. And, and we're going to learn a lot about Doug Peterson. This is his, our first opportunity with him to see what he likes and what he doesn't like and, and really question the decisions on, on who he's going to cut. Like, we, we're watching the same tape that he's watching. I mean, we're not at practice, but still we're able to see who's making what plays in the game. So why are you hanging on to this guy? Chip Kelly, we kind of got a feel for him. You know, were you the type of guy that's a team player? Were you a guy that, you know, wanted all eyes on, on me and, and therefore Chip would cut you? So we're going to learn a little bit about Doug Peterson's uh, cutting habits and, and just a few weeks, so I'm looking sure. forward to seeing that. But I think Josh Huff will be here. I think Jordan Matthews is the guy that you're looking at as your number one, and of course Nelson Aguilar. You need production from all from those two and and Zach Ertz as well. So you think you think Huff survives? I do. Simply I do. because he was a third round pick and he returns kicks. I think the speed. The speed. You think yeah. speed. It very well could happen, but I mean, yeah. if you're just talking about productivity, you just don't see it from him. Well, you, you know, just don't see it. Givens for the major part of camp showed the he, yeah, he's another one. Where's ball, he been? Yeah, but he he disappeared. In, in the games, you know, but you know, I don't even notice him like getting snaps. No. Well, it's, it's, no. it, what was what's going on is it's really not conducive to what he does as a player. He's a guy that goes down the field, breaks breaks the top off the defense. You know, he's a guy that you go to for those long pass plays. Well, you haven't had the ability to block that long, so right. you haven't had the ability to go down the field. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not conducive to his skill set right now. But maybe during the season, he makes the squad and he know that he can go get it. Yeah, look, I, I can buy that. I mean, that's fair. But I, I would just like to see them stretch it every once in a while. I know, I know, you, I, I hear you. You got to protect to be able to do that, but. That's the only purpose why he's here. If you look yeah. at his numbers over his career, yep. uh, he doesn't get a lot of catches. This is all about him every once in a while, one trick either throwing. catching one deep or allowing your guys underneath to get open because the, there's the fear of him taking the top off. He's right. going to blow the top off, exactly. That's yeah. all we heard about him, and now where is he at? So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so every year around this time, there's always some debate over the purpose of the preseason itself, especially when you see big-name players getting injured, right? And we've seen a couple already. You know, obviously, thankfully, Carson, Carson Wentz, Wentz. Isn't, doesn't appear to be anything serious, but Carson Wentz, Eli Apple, a couple Giants right there, Sterling Shepard. You see, you know, some of the players on the list. We go through this seemingly every single year. It's what's the purpose of this? Should it be cut down to, say, two or something like that? Of course, there's the fan angle where – you know, you're paying a lot of money for, for a, a bunch of guys who may not even be in the league. Right, so there's right. a lot of debates to be made both sides. Now, there's also the Paul Turners of the world who need all four games to potentially make a roster. Yep. So there is, a, there is a pretty good debate over this yep. thing. And there's a chance that the game will be canceled due to a bad field.
Or the track. <laughs> or somebody I, I, painted it late. I'm yeah. on record saying there's no reason for the preseason to a point. I think two games would be perfect. I mean, look at last night's game, for, for example. You know, they sat there and told us after the game that it was a vanilla play call across the board. Right. So what, why are you out there risking it? Okay, yeah. you can get the Jets down here to practice. You can practice with the Giants. I mean, they're, they're they Ravens. Gone probably to, they went up to New England in the past and practiced with New England before. Yeah, you so want to yeah. keep it close. You know, New Orleans is down the road a little bit. What are they in West Virginia? Is that where they're practicing? Mm. So, I mean, you could go get those guys as well. I know you probably won't want to play the Giants because you played them twice in the mm-hmm. season. But still, you understand, there are teams close enough here to Philadelphia that you don't need to travel that far, play two preseason games, and that's it. Well, yeah. you know what? I'm going to tell you why they do it. Because he paid like a regular season game for these preseason tickets, number one. Yeah. Number two, you don't play the players regular season checks. You don't pay them like, you know, like 2500 you know, 2800 bucks each player. So you're not playing the ridiculous prices that you know that you pay with these guys during the season. Right. Some guys get like over hundred, two hundred thousand dollar checks. And there is and that kind of cost on the twenty five hundred. So the, yeah. the cost to, to to offset ratio is so high that they're going to keep those four games yeah, that's regardless. Good yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, you don't think about the financial end of it as far as that goes. But right. with the right. NFL, you should always think about the financial end of it. <laughs> that's exactly good why they're doing it. <laughs> All right. So uh, more on the Olympics still here coming up in a little bit. But I want to I want to hit you with this first, the Chase Utley situation, and it was a whole thing. And we got into a whole thing here. I watched sure. it. Yeah. So my, my question is for you, and we saw him come back, and obviously it was vintage Chase Utley stepping to the moment, that kind of thing, the home run, the grand slam. Had a hit last night, as a matter of fact, as well. Uh, gets the ovation not only before but after hitting a couple home runs against the Phillies. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I, I think a lot of people got caught in the moment. Mm-hmm. I think it's fair. I was not there. I was not in the ballpark. Mm-hmm. And, and I realized that some people, and Rob, I caught your point. You're yeah. a diehard. I get it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if you're at the ballpark and you're there, it's the first game of this season or first game of this series, you're there because of Chase Sutton. Mm-hmm. And he, he goes out and performs like that. You're just going to get caught up in the moment. And you're going to get rowdy. And it was impressive. So mm-hmm. I have no problem with the way the fans reacted. Um, I, I, of course, I definitely feel like the second curtain call was over the top. This is a team that's competing. Right. You know? At that and, point, they're still six and a half back in the water. Sure. I don't think they're winning the water. No. Let me be clear about yeah. that. But if you're the players, you still feel like you have a chance. Absolutely. And to hear your crowd cheering has got to be a tough thing. But, I, look, I, I, in all in all, like what the, the offshoot of this is, this guy, to me, Utley, is more beloved even than a Brian Dawkins. He is, he is the sacred cow of Philadelphia sports. Because if you go anywhere near a perception that the guy's getting ripped, people go bananas. Oh, yeah. Take it from me. You're blasphemous. Okay. That's what you are. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I don't you. know yet. I, I, think that his, I think we have to wait on history. No. Because yeah. Dawkins is done. He's out of the game. Yeah. You know, he's everybody's best friend now. You don't ever have an opportunity where you can root for him or root against him at this point. Right. See what happens once Chase Upley is done. Once he hangs him up. It is a little different because they did win. They yep. brought it here. All of that. Twenty-five year drought. You know, yeah. I, I'm still not doing it. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I just can't do it. You know, once, just like when I said when I'm on the field, I can be playing against my cousin. You know, this is blood. I'm gonna choke him just like I'm choking anybody mm-hmm. else. If and you were in the stands, you would have been clapping. You would have been clapping. Not one, not on the grand, not on All right, the grand that, slam. All right, that's fair. I would have been a more a shock. Like I can't believe he just did. Yeah, that. I, yeah right, 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 right. He gets tons of love before the game, and I'm, I'm basically, I'm not. I would never boo him or anything like that. But I'm not. I'm not cheering for him against my team. That's just my stance. And I, and, and again, I've gotten killed all week. Well, the debate and I haven't around changed it. You're, you're virtually unclean right now. Yeah. yeah. How's that timeline? <laughs> oh, it's been a blast. Yeah, it's been a good time. It's, it's really interesting though, because I think to your to your point, if it were anybody else, it, you wouldn't be getting torn apart like you are. It's just because it's, it's Chase, Chase Utley. Utley. Yes, Absolutely. It's Chase Utley puppies, unicorns. You don't go near those kind of things. World Series champions. Cows. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. So Sean, we appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Good you, Thank always. you for having me. Absolutely. More on the Olympics.